mean, they are quite tough to handle. Morning, welcome to Fishing Squad. I've just got down to the park. Just put the tote rig out, tote bait. Um, it's literally just getting to door, as you can see. Um, I'm going to put another rod out in a minute, but I've got a few casts for mackerel. I'll tackle back the rod out. See what happens. I'll spin you around. I don't know what the footage is going to be like. You can just about see me. Um, I'll try and I'll just spin around so you can see a bit more because we've got light behind us. Yeah, so I was fishing on the in the pocket in the weather. It's going to pick up. Wind's going to pick up in a bit off the sea. And it's going to turn it a little bit nasty on here. Not too bad. 20 mile an hour. It's still fishable at 20 mile an hour, by the way. But if you get anything decent on, you're going to be struggling to get it out, and you're probably only going to be able to fish one rod. But you know, it's at about half trick time. I think it's about half five. It's 25 past five now. So what I'm going to do is I have a few. I've got a bit of frozen bait, three or four mackerel. I'm going to uh, see if we can get some fresh and bang that second rod out on bottom. I think. So I'm just going to make sure I put my rod on. Well, the changes that I've done since last time, I've re-spooled both my reels with 65 pound braid rather than 70. Um, it seems to cast better. Someone commented about me using braid on marks like this. Um, I do use a mono leader as well. Um, I've never really lost any braid to anything other than a lobster pot. Uh, it always tends to snap either on the, the rig knot or the leader knot, depending on what type of snag you're in but generally it snaps on the, snaps on the rig knot so I don't believe in mono in the water which I don't like doing that's why I changed to braid rather than using mono to mono leaders because 65 pounds to an 80 pound leader can handle a lot more um, a lot more of a pressure on it when you get in a snag than what um, 25 pounds to an 80 pound leader can obviously in mono so yeah I think it's reducing like your carbon footprint if you like, whatever you want to call it. And also you get more gear back, which again reduces what crap we're leaving on the seabed and stuff. So I'm going to tackle up feathering rod up now, it's just getting light. Probably need it just to get a little bit light, it's a little bit darker than it looks on camera. We'll see how we get on, I mean, still waiting for that first tote run of the year. I'm sure it's not far away, it's just, I've had years where I had a run before. And when everybody else is telling you that they've caught them, it's get, you feel a bit under pressure. You feel like you're missing out. But oh, no, honestly, anyone that's anyone that's catching them now, you know, obviously, good luck to you. Know it's uh, it's brilliant, isn't it, when it goes well? That's what it's that's what it's all about. I'm sure there's a PB out there with my name on it at some point over the next few years or whatever. It's just about putting the time in. Um, I'm sure they'll show. But main focus today, really. I make it sound like it's not such a serious taupe session, just in case we don't get one. We probably won't get one. It's a good tide actually for a taupe today, to be fair. It's definitely good for mackerel. Um, the main focus today is to get some bait for a big session we're having tomorrow on the taupe on another mark. Um, we may be live on YouTube, I'm not sure yet. This video might not be out by the time we are live on YouTube, but we're just going to see, see what happens anyway and stuff. I'm going to get cracked on and get these feathers out, I think. Alright, quick update. I've had a pollock on feathers. I've put both my bottom rods out. I've had a bite on one of them. I'm getting a bite on the other one actually. But I think it's just a doggy or something. So I had a bite on one of them and it developed into nothing. But something's plucking my bait on the other one. I'll pick it up and see if there's a on it. If not, I'll change bait because that, that one, the one I cast out first. So. Felt either hussy or doggy. You know, not great, is it really? We'll see, see if anything's on this one and uh, see if it develops into out and. I really didn't change bait. Yes, so just a pollock so far. That bite on that rod that I was on about in the last section of the video didn't develop into anything. Got a ripping current to the left now. That wind's slowly picking up. It's not, not a problem at the moment. Um, just see how we get on. Got about probably 10 or 12 casts with the feathers in between doing my bottom fishing rods. We'll just have to, oh, no, slip down. We'll just have to keep at it. Hopefully, just gone off a shot there. Hopefully, hopefully something will show with these, with these mackerel at least. 
Oh, I'm in. Mean. Oh, it come off. I just felt it bang at it. <laughs> and it come off. It might come back to it. Fair way out of that, so you'd imagine that must be ma that living in a mackerel, surely. We'll keep at it. Persistence is the key. It has become harder to catch mackerel, you know, off this peninsula, it has. Um, in the numbers that we used to get them, it has anyway. But they're still here, they still keep coming back. Um, like I said before in previous videos, it is, it is a nightmare thought that they don't. You don't get many one, one year, or you don't get any one year, that'd be absolutely terrible. I always think, I wouldn't criticise people either for taking them that they've caught themselves. As long as they just take what they need for food and bait, I don't think it's an issue really. It takes the demand out of the shops, doesn't it, or patrollers and whatever else, whatever else is catching them. I suppose it is just about slow sustainable fishing to, to, to be keeping. Um, yeah, a bit gutted about that on that last cast. It was a good bite, it was good. You know, I, I just drew my rod back like that and rod tips bent round. But well, missed it for some reason. Not to worry. I almost just pulled the hook out of its mouth as I was pulling it, doing that long drawback. I tend to find just plenty of long drawbacks, a nice steady reel in. The bulk of my like retrieving my rig. I just do long drawbacks like that. Wind the slack in. Seems to do the trick off here. Not in any rush to reel in. Some people go at it like a, a mad like a madman don't go when they're reeling in. You don't need to. Not when you're in deep water, you don't. As long as there's some movement to it. So that's what the fish are attracted to the movement. Though, you know, they'll not sometimes if the, if the rig's static. Like then, maybe when I had that hit, I stopped and the fish buggered off basically. If the rig's static, they don't tend to uh, pick it up sometimes. Pollock definitely don't. They only, they only, they only come for it if it's moving. They'll take an interest in it but get so far and bugger off. Yeah, this current at left's really hammering through at the minute. Um, let's check the time. So 5.24 when I checked last time, wasn't it? It's now 6.13, so we've been down here nearly an hour. I've had a couple of bites, I've had a pollock up for others that I didn't get on camera. Run with a small one. About an hour and 15 minutes, sorry, an hour and... I think it was about, an hour, about half seven low tide. About an hour and 15 minutes away. Good play. So, let's see how we get on. We'll keep at this, definitely. I mean, I was only going to put one rod. I'm in, I'm in. These have got to be my cover so far out. Um, Gannets are showing as well. Um, I only put one rod out on the bottom because I wanted to focus on this. So, at the minute, what's happened is that. I've looked at how many mackerel I did have frozen, I brought about five or six with me, like I say. I just thought, you might as well put, be in it to win it, haven't you? You know what I mean? I always find as well, when you're spinning, first thing in the morning, it's very good. We've got a couple on here, I think. We've gone with the tide, though, to the left. But we have got some mackerel. Two what? Three on. Oh, sugar dropping up everywhere. I think that one's got. Uh, one's gone back. <laughs> Catch and release and all that. It fell back into the sea. Uh, I'm just going to get these dispatched, but basically, we did have three. One dropped off. I've got another one, and there's that one. Oh, I just couldn't grab him in time. Not to worry. I'm sure there's plenty about. If you're getting three, you know, there's plenty about. So we'll uh, carry on with this, see how many we get. 25 for the year, not a big one. We get her an hook, get her put back, try and get something else. Yeah, I managed to get the hooks out of it, which I was very surprised about. Quite happy with that. She swallowed the circle really deep. Um, but one thing I will say, because they're going sideways rather than just straight down like a J hook, quite not bad to get out, but 
plus 25 for the year, I mean. Oh, can't, can't leave me alone. Gotta put back. Okay, just can't back out as everything goes to plan all the time. It's not my tipping out, I'm not my rug, so I've just made a bit of a bodge up to try and carry on spinning, spinning around. Let's see if that works, like, I don't know if it will do. It's just a temporary fix till I get back up. It's, it's a bit too abrasive, the inner, inner of that tip. The, uh, the, the Knock the liner out when I cast out. I cast out, well, truthfully, I cracked off. But the rod just went straight over, made it straight up, caught the rocks in front of me. A bit pissed off about that, to be fair. <laughs> That's in a nutshell. <laughs> so, we're going to have a few casts, see if that works. If not, I'll just, I think I'll just bypass the tip ring if need be. It's a long rod, so I, I think I should be okay. I've got a spare tip ring back up where, where I'm staying, so uh, should be alright. Just annoying, innit, when stuff like that happens, when you need some mackerel and... I've had, a hustle. I've had a few pollock as well, by the way. I'm getting a little bite on this left hand rod now, on the rod that gave me the second minute to go. Nice hustle that, deeply hooked. Like I say, I got the hooks out, that's the main thing. I'm really happy that I got the hooks out, really was, because. I've, I've left hooks before in them, but this one, because it was deep hooked on the circle. The, the jay hook had gone in his mouth as well, but it had gone in after the circle. Luckily the deepest hook was a circle, so... We're quite deep in its gill down here, sort of thing. I probably should have videoed it, but I don't like videos. Like this. I don't, I don't like this. You know... But I'm quite honest, you know, if I do leave one in, I'm just... Uh, I brought my slips down as well, so if it had gone down so far, and I couldn't get Let's not preach fish care when we're fishing, hey. You know, it is what it is when you see fishing, isn't it? You know, these things happen. Best performance fish care when you see fishing, especially, is don't fish at all. I think. I think it sounds a bit controversial, but yeah, let's crack on and get some mackerel out anyway. Sorry, just going back to that about what I just mentioned about fish care. In comparison to like carp fishing, the, the fish care in sea fishing is vastly different. That's that's my point. Well, I don't, I don't mean to sound like an idiot. Well, what I just said last. Anyway, um, you know, with sea fishing, you put in talks in a fish sometimes with penal rig. You know, at the end of the day, you're fishing in the wild, aren't you? I suppose the fish need to be you need to be landing them. Anyway, changing subject. Was... Two more mackerel. I'm having a mare, me, I got my feathers wrapped around one of my bottom rods when I got them on. But, you know, it's four today, five. You can't let them that dropped off, so I'm going to keep going. I just ended, up, just ended up feeding the line through the top ring. I managed to smooth the top ring through with a bit with my pliers. So I just managed to keep the pliers closed and just sort of go like that way. And it smoothed it out and it's not kept great in the line. So we're going to have a few more casts with the old feathers and see if we can get some more. Because I need some bait for tomorrow, basically. Uh, I've just got my rods out, one of them's snagged. Well, what I start doing as well, when you get into a snag with braid, you can cut your hands. So I get a pole out of my sling and I use it to free it myself. I just get my braid. This rod on the right, this rod, one rod closer to you is stuck. I wrap it around this pole a few times. You just walk back. Now. This gives you a bit of leverage, so you don't quit your hands. I felt like the weight, the weight link was snapped on that one. Oh, I've got it all back, I think. I don't know what that we're in. Obviously with these sloths there it is, they yeah, don't have a level wind on. So you need to speed it on nice and level and fairly tightish. Just put your thumb over it, it's normally enough. I've got another rod here, I thought I'd bite them for a minute. Maybe it was a bite, maybe it was a bite that I think. I'm having a mare every day today. Doesn't, I'm having an absolute nightmare. Also, I've had a full mackerel out there that hadn't come out of the clip for about an hour. Absolute nightmare. I've smashed my tip ring. I lost the mackerel earlier. It's one of them mornings, I think. Not very good work. It's been out there, full mackerel. Well, nothing's touched it. I'm, I'm getting a bite on this rod actually. 
Tip off with circle. I'm, I'm thinking based on what we've seen before, it should be on the circle this one, no problem. Definitely it will. So this will be also 26 if we get this one in. The, uh, no tote yet this year from what? Must be something in my rigs. <laughs> It's a small eel. I see a dogfish, that's a small eel. That's looking straight up to me. See which up you see on, he's on the J up this one. He's a babby conger. I had a conger for a few months actually. And I'm getting regular. It's delicately up. These small ones have got, well they've all got a bad habit of messing your rig. These small ones are worse for it. Right. It's not good having two rods out of water, is it? But if you get it back, what are you supposed to do? It's long 25 with the us. I mean, with these, when they've got a look in them, you don't really want to be handling them too much. The slate, you could end up with the hook in your hand, so I guess it's trying to not to position like just put the hook out of them. He's only a babby. Really he's only a babby. It's got a bit of bait elastic on his nose. You know, it's only a small one. You could if you were struggling for bait, that one would be nice to use for bait. You could get some decent bait off that for taupe. We'll put him back. no problem. Well, I suppose we're having a bit of a mixed morning then. Um, bait clip didn't release. I popped my tip ring. I lost the mackerel earlier. I went over my line as well when I had, a, had some mackerel on. I'm going to rebate these two rods for the last bait. I'll just check the time. It must be after low tide now. It seemed like an eternity went by when I was trying to sort that tip ring out because I got that huss as well in between times. Pop the tip ring out and I got the hus sort of after it. It was half hour after low, so I usually say you can fish it till three hours after low, really comfortably. Um, a lot of people think that it's just don't knock it on it at low tide, but I totally disagree with that. I've had I've had taupe after low tide many times. Um, you know, just a guy, just a guy. Morning, auntie. Like I say, that mackerel bait was beautifully presented, but it hadn't come out of the clip. How often do they fail a Gemini clip? About one in a million. Yeah, it's usually down to the operator area. That. But you can see everybody makes everybody has problems out sometimes. It's one of them mornings. Hopefully, things will pick up in a bit. Um, well, the fishing front's been all right, but I mean, just generally, little bits and bobs like that. <laughs> so, we'll see. I'll bring you back in a minute. A couple more mackerel. They're hard work, but they are here. You're just going to keep at it. Just put the last baits out. Um, I'd, uh, I've stopped using frozen bait now. I've just put two fresh on. I mean, I'm trying to keep bait for tomorrow, but I have to come back down in the morning to catch some more mackerel. I'm going to have a couple more casts, I think, with feathers anyway, but we'll see how we get on. I've got four, because I've used two for bait. I caught seven in total, if you count the one that dropped off, which I don't really particularly count. Um, but I've had six definitely. I've had a few pollock that I've put back and put them on camera. I've had a Hudson and a Conga. I've had the top eye of my spinning rod that I use, that 14 foot pentidal pop out. I've had a bait clip, a bait, um, Gemini bait clip failed to release. That I've had a bait out for an hour, <laughs> an hour on. Um, I really didn't tune mackerel in and I've got my feathers wrapped around my braid. Uh, what else has happened? I can't remember. 
Yeah, just be interested to see what people's take is on fish care. I mean, people get shot down a lot, don't they? Read a lot of stuff on the internet, on Facebook sites. They get shot down a lot for just holding a bus. Right. Just uh, wind a bit of lining. Holding a bus without supporting its stomach and stuff like that. But how do you get it off your snood if you don't, you know? I mean, you, you don't want to really probably hold them down with here, but I don't think it really does them any harm. They've always swam off fine with me. That's just what it is, it's a fish care. I mean, to me, there's no point in being too concerned how you hold them as long as you're not being an idiot with them, you're being careful with them. It's fine. You know, at the end of the day, you, you winch them up from, from depth. So the best form of fish care for like a hustle or whatever you've got on Kong or whatever is not to fish for them, really. It just seems. Just read it. Just someone to put in comments what they, how they, their attitude towards fish care is. I mean, main thing is that the fish swims off fine for me. You don't damage it. You know, it's gonna have an hole with its gobwet hooks been. You know, treat it with respect. Um, a lot seems to be getting better of it online. That's why I had that bit of a rant earlier. <laughs> I end up just thinking about stuff when I'm fishing, and then it just got, all comes out sometimes. <laughs> well, I've had a horror show over morning, but I've caught some fish. So I've got to be relatively happy that Mr. Tope is not showing for me still, but. So sure will. I'm just going to spin you around because what's new? I've got 65 pound braid. I've put some shrink tube on the other rod and a real seat. Um, I'll show you my rods. Yes, yeah, so, so on one rod now I've got a green shrink tube at the bottom, the real seat. I've actually put a fishing squad sticker on that one and epoxied over it. Um, I'm going to do the same on the other one as well. Uh, for some reason, though, I put one real seat on one way around and one on the other. I took this section back with me last time to put fit the real seat to it but I didn't really pay much attention to how I put the other one on. We don't want to match it anyway, do you? I like to know which rod's which to be honest. As I mentioned it before, I don't know if it's an OCD thing or what. Then I've got 65 pound braid to an 80 pound mono leader. You know what? That sits on these reels lovely. I think the 70 pound I was using just seems to, it, it was okay. But I didn't put 80 on one as well. I just think it's a little bit too thick, just slightly. But I've got all my gear back today. The only downside that I've got today in terms of losing rigs or whatever you want to call it is I've got to sniff a rig up that was on and I managed to get, get the hooks out of it. You know, I would med up that I got the hooks out of that. I actually like would get in there, you know, if it had been on camera you'd have been like in a court it obviously. I would just happy that I've got the hooks out of it. Um, it's the deepest I've seen a circle go down man. I'm happy this morning, I'm happy. I've loved being down here, it's been it's been brilliant really. Um, seen, seen loads of seals this morning. So uh, hopefully we'll see Mr. Tell before we go. I'm just gonna tidy a few bits up because we've got some rain forecast. The wind has picked up a little bit. It's not at the maximum speed that it said it was gonna do. We'll speed back. Yeah, it has picked up a little bit. Um, it's probably about 10 mile an hour to 12 mile an hour. Um, it's gonna get up to 22 I think this afternoon. The rain's supposed to be coming in a bit. I'm gonna have I'm gonna have I'm gonna have a tidy up a few casts with the feathers, tackle the feather run down. Right about it then. Um and then just just pack up from there really. I'm gonna drink a water I think first. Could do with a cup of tea to be fair. I mean you, you know it's just been brilliant down here this morning. Oh I'm getting a little bit of nutty bite. Don't like a toe though, that's not trouble. It's annoying, isn't it? This generally as well. The smaller tides get, the more fun. The smaller fish you get, like doggies, hoss, congas just seem to feed a lot of the time anyway. Generally, off here, well, they have done in the last few years. It's annoying, isn't it? This this really is annoying. I thought first light might change things. Cause I've been fishing a lot in the day, in the heat of the day. I think we'll try the other mark tomorrow. It's like a doggy bite this. I'll tell you what, we'll put you on the camera about we'll have a look see what it is, if it, it materialises into anything. Okay, so it's this rod on the right side, look at that. This one here. Let's go chuck these in my bag. It's a bit of waistline that one from earlier on. It's just, I don't really want to block your view, but I'm just going to. 
push the camera back a bit further. So I want you to see if you can. I just don't like being too far away. Okay, that's better. Right. I've had a little bit of a knock on this rod. It's only like a husk bite or something, so I'll just pick it up. I just hold it like that. It seems to lose interest while I'm setting the camera back up. Stand. I'm just waiting for a, a judder on the rod too, basically. If I get one of my new bands like this, I just lift into the fish. going so I mentioned it quite a lot that it is really important. I yeah, wind to line on the other one because it's a bit line on the other one as well with the wind. We just get a bit of a I don't really want to wind in too hastily because I've got fresh mackerel on and it's the last bait up. So unless it's a really good bite, I ain't going to strike into it or hit it or whatever. It needs to be super positive. So, I've just been thinking about, you know that tip ring that I've got? The rod I've been using for spinning. I've got an old tip ring at home. I'm going to snip the eye, the, the insert out and just try and pop it into that rather than taking the full tip ring off. So the tip ring, the actual metal bit of the tip ring on that one's not too bad. It's then still got all the original rings on it, hasn't it, in effect? Apart from one insert. Yeah. We'll see what happens anyway. I'll bring you back if anything happens. Um, if not, probably do a close down when I get back up with a cup of tea. Right, so I'm just going to have a look at the rods back now, obviously. Just have a look at these rods. Uh, say rods. So I've just noticed on this uh, Gorilla Surf rod, I think it's been like it ever since I bought it. When I put it away today, I just noticed that the, the weld on the top there that goes into that owl has broke. Luckily, I kept a couple of rings off the Pen Extreme Match 2 that are damaged or broke. One of them was a tip ring, so that'll be going on here. With the Pen Tidal rod, I'm going to have to get a new tip ring. It's going to be fairly shortly, I'll get that sorted today. Um, I've tried putting, tried various inserts I've got knocking about the garage, but the ring's damaged, so I'm going to have to take the ring off by the looks of it. Like I'm going to have to do this one. So, yeah, so what I do is, well, basically, all you really need to do is just heat it a bit lighter in it, but where well, it's, it's glued on. There's some whipping there as well, like on the back of the eye to finish. Get it heated up. Get longer. And hopefully the old long nose pliers will take it off. Yeah, straight off, no problem. As easy as that. Yeah, it's knackered that. Definitely. I thought it was funny because it was it's like damaged on the weld. I think it's been like that ever since I've had it though, because it, it's always looked different. Now when you cast it out and look at it, it rod rest, it's always looked like it's a bit squashed. Yeah, well going back to that session like it, we're a good session that, it wasn't bad at all really. We've had a few dramas like, <laughs> but um, that's fishing in it. A few running repair to do on the back of it. Um, but you want to keep your gear in tip top nick, don't you, especially your rods. You just can't afford not to. So. Yeah, we will see how we get on over the next week, by the way. So, with a few videos coming out. Uh, looking forward to a few sessions. Might be a few familiar faces in them. Again, it might just be me. <laughs> but we'll see. Uh, but tip rings are an easy repair, aren't they? That's not, that's not a problem. Um, 
I did have an insert pop out on one of these gorilla rods. But I were lucky because I had an insert of that Pen, a Pen Extreme Match 2 rod. It just popped straight in. I, I didn't even have to glue it. I'm not sure if you have to glue them. I'm not a rod specialist or whatever you want to call it, rod builder. Um, yeah, and then with this one, it's still on a bit, of, a bit of the old rod. This could be fun. Going to burning my hands off here. So just take this one up as well, a bit lighter. Yeah, it just popped back in that insert. Like, why? Why we're fishing a really stormy tide and where we've been this morning, and uh, the, the tripod fell over and knocked an insert out. But luckily, let's see if that's done it enough. Um, yeah, it has, believe it or not. Nearly. Yeah, luckily the insert off the off one of my old pen rods. Fitted straight in, which were a result. It's been fine, you know, lead knots have been going through it and everything. They are Fiji guides on the pen on the pen set on the pen rods, though, aren't they? Most of them. They are they used to be, I don't know if they still are. So yeah, we'll just see how we get on. Right, so that's it then. I mean, what a bad bad little session that. Obviously I'm not gonna go over the negatives with rods and whatever else happened. Um but um yeah, there'll be a few more videos coming, so keep an eye out. Cheers, guys. See you later.